After a whole bunch of editing, trying out shots, adding music and sound effects, color correcting our clips, we've done so many things, but now we're ready to share our project. We're ready to finalize it. So what I'm gonna do is use Command-0 to reset to the default layout, and we're ready to share it. So I would recommend going back and reviewing your project, watch it over and over and over again, continue to make as many changes as you want to it, but then when you're ready to share it, we're gonna go up to the top right and click on the little share menu. After clicking on the share menu, you'll see some share options, and you can definitely customize these different destinations that you wanna to share to, but let's look at one of these, and specifically we're gonna look at the master file. This is your default share destination, and this really is the option that I'd recommend using when you wanna create a finalized file of your project. Just click on master file, and we see the share window comes up, and it gives us a couple tabs here. So first is the info tab, and which we did select master file, but if you select any of the other options, you'll see most of these uh, in them as well. And what this has is the name of the file here at the top. You can click on this and change it. Right now it's called just scene four, but I might wanna say scene four V 1.0 for version 1.0 to keep track of these. Below that we see a description. And so I might say that this is the first version of scene four. And then we see the creator which this comes in based on the name of your account. So you can change this and put in your name if you're the creator and editor of it or add uh, a different name there. And then we have tags. So this is something that's included with Mac OS. The finder can tag items and files. So based on everything that you've done with your project and the labeling that you did with your clips, it's gonna add these tags. You can certainly go in here and delete these tags and put in something else. Maybe this is the overtime movie, and this is a draft, so I could put in draft, and you can put in as many tags as you want to help organize your files. And at the bottom of this window, we see some information about this clip, which is very important to keep an eye on, being as this lets you know what type of file is gonna be created. So for this overtime scene, it was all shot at 1920 by 1080 and 24 frames per second. So if I'm looking at this, I'm saying, okay, that's accurate. I do want to go out as the full quality. But if I saw a different frame rate here, different frames per second, I might want to go back and check my settings to see what they're at, which we're going to look at in just a second. I can see the audio is going out as stereo left and right, which looks perfect. And for a time here, it's sharing the entire project. That's what this little time uh, indicator shows. If you use the range selection tool, you can actually select just a portion of your project. Let me show you that. Hit R to activate the range tool. Select just an area. Go up to share master file. So if you do select just a range, you'll notice at the bottom here, it's now showing this little range icon and it's letting me know it's only gonna be sharing seven seconds, seven seconds and 17 frames. So if I saw this, I'd know, okay, that's not what I want. I actually wanna share the entire project. So I could say cancel, click anywhere to unselect that area, then go back to share master file. That allows you to make sure that you're sharing the entire project versus everything. Just know that if you go in and out like that, it's resetting all our names here. So we'd wanna go back up and re-add our titles here. Next to the amount of time, we see the type of file that's gonna be made, which is right now a .mov file. And to the right of that, this little menu is actually kind of cool. This, if you hover over it, will show you how compatible this file is with other Apple devices and PCs. And right now we're sharing a master file, which is really only designed to be played back on a Mac. So you wanna take a look at this menu if you know you're trying to share this to someone who's gonna watch it on their iPhone, or maybe they're using an Apple TV to preview it. You wanna make sure you get a check mark on this list, which we'll see that in another share option in just a second. And then the last piece of uh, information here is the estimated file size. Again, this is just an estimate. When it actually goes through and compresses, it's gonna be a different size. But for the most part, I find Final Cut does a good job of uh, estimating these accurately. A uh, couple other things, this little window here is actually a preview of your film. You can scrub through it and see a preview. Uh, below it, you'll see warnings in case there is a warning happening. So in our case, we did add some captions 
but those captions have validation errors. So that can be an issue if you're trying to share out the captions in this version. So it's good to look at these warnings if they do show up. Uh, in this case, it's a caption issue. I can actually just really quickly see what that is. I'll go to the timeline index, click on roles, enable the captions, and hit this button on the right to show them on the timeline. And there I could see right what the issue is. Uh, these two are overlapping, which they shouldn't be. So I'm gonna use my select tool and we'll just move those so they're no longer overlapping. Cool, and then if I go back to the share menu, hit master file. Again, I have to redo our information here. Look at the bottom, verify everything looks good. It does, notice there's no more validation error in this window, so that looks great. So that's the info tab. The next one is the settings tab. And this is probably the most important one because this determines how this file is gonna be created. So we see the format, which is both video and audio, which makes sense. If I wanted to send out just the audio, I could do that. Or if I know I'm trying to publish this to a specific type of device, I could select that here. And this is great because if I select Apple devices, notice it's no longer creating an MOV. It's gonna create an M4V file. And if I hover over my little screen here, I can see it's compatible with a much wider range of devices. Not the oldest iPhone and iPods, but for a lot of the current generation iPhones and iPads, it is compatible here. It's also compatible on a PC and Apple TVs. So this might be a way that we wanna share it if we're trying to have a bunch of people look at it. And also, I changed the file size. This is way down, it's only 70 megabytes instead of, I think it was like 800 or so before. So uh, depending on the, ch the format you select, that's gonna drastically change your uh, file size and compatibility. But in this case, I do wanna get a full quality version out. I'm mastering this. We're trying to review it. So I'm gonna say video and audio. Next, we see what video codec is being used. And a codec is essentially how video is gonna be compressed and decompressed. So how we're creating the package of the video and then on the other end, how someone's gonna open it up and see it. This gets pretty complex and technical because it's more about how the computer is handling that file versus how you're actually working with it. But what you should know is that Apple ProRes is much higher quality compared to H.264. And our source right now is Apple ProRes 422. We have smaller formats like 422 LT and proxy, and there's higher quality formats like 4x4, and even uncompressed is an option. So I'm going to switch between these, but take a look at the estimated file size. H.264 is a very compressed file, so it is very small, so it's only 135 megabytes there. If I change it to ProRes 422, we jump way up to 869 megabytes. And if I go down to uncompressed 10-bit, Notice it's a enormous size of 7.47 gigabytes in the file size. So your codec is very important. Uh, Apple ProRes 422 is a fantastic codec for mastering. And in, in many cases, this is going to be the one that you want to use. However, if you're working on more high-end content and you're working with a graphic designer, a motion graphic designer, they're using motion or after effects to do some pretty complex graphics. You may want to send them something that's 4x4 or 4x4 XQ um, to get them a high quality version over there. But yeah, in this case, we're going to use 422. I can see the resolution is set based on my uh, canvas in the background, so that looks great. Color space is fine. Audio is fine. If I had set up chapter markers, I could include those in the project. This is only one scene, so we didn't need chapter markers, and I can uncheck that. And then the final thing here is what are you going to open this file with? And QuickTime is the default. That makes sense. But if you just want to share this and you don't need to open the file, you can say do nothing. But in this case, I'm going to choose QuickTime, and that looks great there. And then again, I'll go down to the bottom and review it. It's just a Mac format. That's okay. So that's the Settings tab. And if I go over to Roles, I can see what roles are actually being exported and shared. So it's exporting them out as QuickTime movies, which is great. You could do a multi-track QuickTime movie, which would actually send out multiple video layers in a, a file. And you can also do each of these as separate files. 
Uh, all these might be useful if you're trying to master or you're trying to send your audio to your audio guys and your video over to the color correctors. Maybe they're going to be doing something different. You could send all of these out as separate files uh, to get them over there. Regardless of what you select here at the bottom, we see a list of those tracks. So it is sending out my video track, which is fine, and it's sending out audio and all of the roles are being included. We can see our captions on the right here are being embedded as CEA 608 files, which is fine. And if I wanted to, I could check this box, export them as a separate file, but in this case, I do just want it as a single file. So keep an eye down here. If I uncheck that, it's just the one MOV file. If I check it off, we're getting those two files. All right, so that looks good for roles. And essentially, we've set everything up, so we're ready to share it. So I'm gonna hit the next button. I'm going to choose where I want to save it. Let's go ahead and put this one on the desktop and click on Save. And at the top left under our background tasks window, we can see it's going and sharing that movie out. It's transcoding it. And once it's done, we told it to open up with QuickTime. So here it is in the QuickTime player. And I could play it or I could scrub through and watch it. We even notice this little button here to turn on my English captions are on there. So as I'm playing through this, that. we now see the captions that were uh, created with Final Cutter in that file as well. So that file is created. It's ready to go. I can share it wherever I want to share it, send it out to other people.